More Heart Than Talent Radio. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Great Tuesday afternoon here, week before Christmas. What a great day to be in production and relaxation. More Heart Than Talent Live here, December 18th, I believe it is, 2007, 2018. We're at the end of the era. It's almost the end of 2018. We're moving into 2019. I have a great, I have a great Facebook Live for you today. Today's topic is the five signs you're a codependent in your business and then how to transform and build a team from power. Power meaning not the physical power, but the emotional power that's, that is led by recovery, consciousness, awareness, understanding, and being able to change your attractor factor. So I'm going to cover a few quick announcements. We'll move into the inspirational portion of today's Facebook Live. Now, for 20-plus years, I used to say move into the inspirational portion of tonight's call. Now, this is obviously a daytime Facebook Live, so this is a Facebook Live, not a live conference call. Now, for to archive some of my old conference calls going back into the mid-2000s, you can go to goldenmastermind.com. And then the new format, More Heart Than Talent Live, is also available on goldenmastermind.com. Many of those videos are also, many of these lives are on video on YouTube, and you can find them. So once again, welcome to the live today. Announcements for today. Now, originally, I was going to be in Terrytown, New York this Saturday. That event is canceled and postponed to January 26th. Looking forward to <clears throat> the new year. I'll be in Philadelphia January 5th. I will be in Terrytown, New York, January 26th. Those are the two events I have booked for January and a whole host of events moving into February, March, April. I'm going to be in Las Vegas this year with Mindy Shaw. I just announced that. You know, really, really inspired. Now, this a week from this Saturday, I'll be wrapping up 2018 in beautiful Los Angeles, California, at LAX, at the Hilton Hotel with Brittany Cara. Brittany is very iconic. She is an activist. She's the best-selling published author and someone of, and a woman of influence and affluence. And she and I will be hosting More Heart Than Talent Saturday, December 29th, the second annual Into the Era event. It's, a lot, it's the second time in a row we've ended the year with a live event. So if you want to have access to that, we'd love to see you. If you're looking for free coaching or insight on how to transform, recover, build a better business, write more, better content, be a better person, I offer free 20-minute coachings. You can access that by sending me a message on Facebook. Now let's move into the inspirational portion of today's Facebook Live on building an independent team, attracting to your reality, people and situations that will foster cause, meaning, and purpose. Now, to change your attractor factor and to change who and what you attract is a skill. And that skill is, is enhanced and empowered by learning the language of letting go. Lang letting go is a skill, and as you begin to practice the skill of letting go, you let go of anxiety, fear, and doubt. Now, this is what tends to attract your reality, the same people and situations over and over that will fulfill your disappointment. As you move into a higher state of awareness, a higher state of being, a higher state of consciousness, power, esteem, any of these situations, you begin to attract your reality, a more quality type of person in a higher level of consciousness. If you're building a leverage business, if you're an internet marketer, if you're selling real estate, insurance, any multitude of businesses that require you to attract clients that are prosperous, success seekers, people who are seeking value, people who are service oriented, then it's going to be your responsibility to be able to attract a certain number of clients that you can collaborate with. Now, if you're building a team and a team culture, it's going to be the same situation. You also have to factor that a large percent of the population is in fear, anxiety, and doubt. Now, if you are codependent, now let's take a look at this word. It's a very often used word in recovery, codependent. Codependent. So, and if you've ever read the book Codependent No More by Melody Beatty or any of her companion books, read chapter five. It's called Detachment. It's a very, very empowering chapter 
will allow you to have a better understanding of what detachment means. It doesn't mean you don't care, but it means you're able to separate your feelings from facts and separate your feelings from people so that you're no longer over-obligating, overwhelmed, enabling, doing more for others than you do for self. Codependent. Now, Melody Beatty, in her groundbreaking book, Codependent No More, in the preface to the book, breaks down her definition of what codependent means. And then chapter number five is a game-changing chapter. It's not a chapter you read. It's a chapter that you study. It's a whole home study course on itself because that chapter is called Detachment. So there's codependent and detachment. Chapter five, codependent no more. That is called detachment. And codependent typically means enable. E-N-A-B-L-E. -E. Enable. Typically meaning to over-obligate. Do more for others. Rescuing people. Doing more for them than you do for yourself. Moving one of your children. Moving one of your relatives into your home. Moving someone off the street. I mean, whatever the situation is, is it means that you tend to over-obligate. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't do random acts of kindness or that you don't you don't go out and do charitable acts and do situations like this, but it means that your identity isn't based on over-obligating yourself. Now, if you're a chronic over-obligator, if you are an enabler, there's a high probability that you're going to be unorganized, undisciplined, overwhelmed, taking on more duties, obligations, characteristics, service, all the situations that happens when you are chronically codependent. Now, myself, I'm in recovery of codependence. Yesterday was my 31st anniversary of drug and alcohol recovery, December 17th, going back into the 80s. You do the math, 31 years, there's the year, 1987, 31 years. But also, I did not understand the degree of codependence that I was and still have some codependent tendencies, meaning going going beyond the call of duty, overpaying, over-obligating, doing too much, doing doing more than I should be doing, setting someone up to disappoint me, and romancing someone, shiny object syndrome, MMO, might miss out, FMO, fear of might missing out, these situations that I have had tendencies to overwhelm myself and over-obligate myself. Now is I, I, I'm, now that's you, I is you, so it's I is me, I am separating my feeling from, and this is a key word today. Now, my major events, my small intimate events, I use whiteboards exclusively, and I can use PowerPoints and other situations, but here's, here's a word that you really want to understand. It is called events, because events shape feelings. Events are the events that we hold on to, or the events that we don't understand, and we repress, and we tell herself, I don't remember my childhood, I don't have a good memory, I don't remember what happened to me. But I keep doing the same thing over and over, not understanding why I do what I do. And then the analytical, egoic mind goes to great lengths to try and make sense of it. I want to make sense of it. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? But you, want to, you want to be able to let go of making sense because recovery and addiction doesn't make sense. Recovery is called consciousness, and consciousness is awareness, understanding, and knowing. And once you begin to localize, once you begin to understand, as, as I, as you, as me, as we, as we begin to understand cause and effect, why I do what I do, that's what letting go means, my ability to separate my feelings from events. How do I? 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 The analytical egoic mind continues to ask this question, how do I? How do I? How do I? It becomes rhetorical. Well, it's not how do I, it's I am. And in a recovery state, as you begin to elevate your energy, change your, change your emotional state, separate your feelings from anxiety, which is anger, hate, resentment, guilt, shame, abandonment, rejection, overwhelmed feelings, grief, and apathy, as you're separating old self, creating new self, what you're virtually doing is wiring a new brain. And that new brain that you're wiring comes to the neocortex of your brain, and you actually begin to live in both brains. If you've been challenged, overwhelmed, undisciplined, unorganized, a lot of what you're doing, you're trying to make sense of it. You're trying to figure out why you do what you do, and then a lot of what you do becomes unconscious, subconscious, and a repressed state, 
or in a suppressed state. Repressed are the events you don't remember. Suppressed are the events you know you do over and over and you continue to do them. Even though it says, you'll say, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why do I do this? Well, you do it because you're neurochemically addicted to a set of feelings and your, your body runs your brain and there's a payoff you get from it. Now, addicts hate the word payoff. They hate to admit the word payoff. I don't want the payoff. And Jim Morrow was famous for saying, playoffs? We're not going to make the playoffs. You must be crazy. No, it's not the playoffs. It's the payoff. The payoff is the emotional high and low that you receive from creating the same situation over and over, even though your mouth may say, I don't want to, but your body continues to override your mouth, even though it doesn't make sense, and you continue to do the same thing over and over. And that's typically what happens. A lot of people will create a codependent team, a team that is dependent on the leader. There's very little duplication when you're leader dependent. Your objective is to build a business, a culture. Uh, you want to create a situation where your employees can operate without you. You can take a vacation. Your business doesn't fall apart. Now, some businesses are leader sensitive. I have one of those businesses. I don't, it's, I don't have a lot of duplication because I'm a coach. Now, there are ways I can create coaching platforms, coaching programs, coaching certificates. I mean, training people how to be coaches, I have some of that, but I have a business that right now is also leader dependent. Ideally, you want to have a business as leader independent, where you have people that can flourish, collaborate, create on command, can come into your structure, your organization, network marketing, direct sales, insurance, real estate, some of the business models, you can create that over and over where there's a residual type of pay structure. You can create businesses that are not leader dependent. A more traditional business oftentimes is dependent on the leader and that situation requires great leadership skills. Now the business that you're building, if it's leverage, does not require great leadership skills initially. It requires exceptional emotional skills. Your emotional skills what keeps you avoiding avoiding and keeps you producing in production in a relaxed body. But what many people do is they avoid avoiding. They avoid what they should be doing because they have avoidant tendencies. They procrastinate to fulfill a feeling of being disappointed. Letting go of that situation, understanding that is a major breakthrough because as you begin to understand the cause that creates the effect, then you're not the mind-body connection to the events. It's the events that you don't understand and the events that you continue to perpetuate that keep you in anxiety, fear, and doubt. And anxiety, fear, and doubt will keep you in a place where you'll, you'll attract low-level energy people to fulfill your feelings. Typically, in a low esteem where you have self-confidence but low self-esteem. So self-confidence depends on recognition, rewards. Now, typically... When you're codependent, you're looking for a reward from someone. You want someone to thank you. You're going beyond the call of duty. After all I've done for you, I've been over backwards. I'll give you the shirt off my back. That's not a good tendency. I've heard people flaunt that. I'd give you the shirt off my back. Well, that's, that's not something you'd always – I mean, there's context in that. If you see someone on the freeway struggling, someone getting picked on, someone has a flat tire – and you're a good Samaritan, that's, that's a great quality. But if you go beyond the call of duty over and over, over obligating yourself and not getting any emotional reward for it, and you end up disappointed frequently, that's codependence. And that unfortunately happens a lot. Now, what is the, what is the cause that creates the effect of this? Well, oftentimes, as children, we lose our innocence, meaning that we're put in a role as a child where we have to be a grown-up, or we're not, we may not be put in this role, we take on this role because of the circumstances. If you grow up in an addicted household, if you grow up there's violence, if you grow up with parents are gone all the time and they're working, or you have to take on a job and you have to contribute to the household, well, this can affect your innocence because you shouldn't be a child. You should be playing in the playground playing sports, getting grades, going to school, having a great time, going to Disneyland, experiencing life. But if you're in dysfunction, then the mind-body connection to that dysfunction you grow up in starts to create anxiety. And that anxiety starts to create worry, fear, doubt, overwhelmed state. So if you're upstairs and you're ready to go downstairs, you're already anxious about what's going to happen because you live in an unpredictable situation, this becomes a neurochemical behavior, cause and effect, 
that can create an identity. And this identity can create anxiety. Then you go to school and you're worried about getting picked on, getting called out, getting singled out. You're not sure you can make the cut, make the grades, any multitude of situations. Your, your brain and your body are colluding together to create anxiety. And this anxiety can follow you through your entire life until I come along. And then I come along, I start to point this out for you. And I direct you to Codependent No More by Melody Beatty, Letting Go by David Hawkins, Evolving the Brain by Dr. Joe Dispenda, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dispenza, The Answer by John Assaraf, Biology of Belief by Bruce Lifton, The Breakthrough Factor by Dr. John Demartini, and my newest book, the or my newest book is that you'll that just came out on Amazon that you definitely want to take advantage of that was a bestseller last week, number one in two different categories on Amazon. That I'm sorry, that is the breakthrough factor. So when as you have a better understanding of cause and effect and why we do what we do, then you want to be able to create the ability to separate your feelings from the events that shape them. And when you're no longer the mind-body connection, that means that you're not emotionally and neurochemically connected to an event. You're able to see an event for what it is and separate your feelings. That's what letting go is. So I'm not stupid. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not unorganized. I mean, I'm in the process of recovery. I'm not always nervous. I'm not always, when, you, when you're in an always state of anxiety, you have no room to change because it, that's an absolute. When you speak in those kinds of absolutes, well, that's absolutely what you'll create and what you'll attract. When you're always overwhelmed, you're going to attract your reality, other overwhelmed non-success seekers. When you're always nervous, you're going to attract your reality, other people that are anxious frequently, because that's, that's what you're going to attract. That relegates you to luck, and I'd much rather be good than lucky. And as you become good, that's a skill. You become good at the skill. The transformation process of breaking any behavior is not difficult. It is this word, and this word, this word will give you context, will give you merit, will give you, will give you opportunity to be and stay in recovery. This is the word. It's new. But when you say words like, oh, it's so hard, it's going to be difficult, it's arduous. And we, if you can go an entire day without being critical of self or others, you're in a day of recovery. And what does that mean? It means in recovery, you're a lot more inspired. You're a lot more, you live in a much more inspired life. Now, I wrote a post yesterday that I let, I release this post every year and I add a different year to it. I've been writing this post for 10 years. So yesterday it was my 31st year of recovery. And I wrote just a little bit about where I was, my destitution, where I was in in that day that my last day of drinking, I hit a rock bottom that ended me ended me up going to a hospital, to a heroin clinic, to recovery, to 31 years of sobriety. Now, you could do that. You could be that person, provided you're willing to put forth the effort. Now, if, if you have at present a codependent team, a codependent household, a codependent life, and you don't understand that, you don't understand what that means, then do your best to... to to find the content that will allow you to understand the content and the context of what codependency means. Typically, it means over-obligate, do more for others than self, put self last, and feel guilty and shame. And then most importantly, this word. This word shows up frequently in this process. Selfish. You don't want people to think you are selfish. So selfish shows up so frequently in many people's communication that they go beyond the call of duty not to succeed because they don't want anyone to think that they are selfish. When, when selfish is your communication style, it's because you've been guilted into this whole modality that keeps you doing the same thing over and over. Your objective is to be prosperous. That's prospero, prosperity. That's in the flow. Now, when you build a team from force, that's codependency. When you're when you're telling people you have to go to this event. If you don't go to this event, you're not teachable. If you don't do this, you're not teachable. If you don't do this, you're not this. If you don't do this, you're not this. If you don't do this, and that's force. When you're when you're leading a team of independent success seekers, many of them are rebellious, 
And many people won't do what you want them to do because they want to be in conflict. And if you want to make people wrong and use force to try and control a team, we're well, going to get a backlash that's called counterforce. And it's going to be your responsibility to understand that not everyone's going to comply. And there's not only one way to do business, there's multiple ways to do businesses. And if you have a really good system, your company has a good system, your team has a good system, that is awesome. But you also, it's your responsibility to understand not everyone's going to follow that system because they're not, they're not, they're not followers. Some people are, are leaders, they'll go out and build their own system. And you want to do your best not to make people wrong, to criticize them. Even though you know you have the best solution for people, there are people who are not solution oriented. There are people who are not results oriented. They want conflict. They want to struggle. They want to sabotage themselves. And it's your responsibility to understand that and, once again, not make people wrong. That means you're more flexible. You have better awareness. You understand. And you know that there's a 20% and an 80%. You're looking for a few 20%ers, 10%ers, 4%ers, and 1%ers who are willing to do what most people won't so they can live life on their terms and their time frame. And that's really what you are looking for. Hi, Lisa Oliver. I see you just joined us there. Who else is there? Pietro. Good to see you, Pietro. Your coaching time is coming right up. Brooklyn. Good to see you. Tracy Calvert. Jack Cherry. A lot of great people. Julian Gonzalez. Mari. Good to see you. I'll be coaching very soon, Mari. So it's my absolute privilege to be able to share this content with you today. Now, here's all of you, you can do you 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 can be this person. That that's the first place you understand it. That's self-actualization. I am good enough. That is esteem. Esteem is regard for self without feeling selfish. Esteem is regard for self without feeling guilty. And you can still, instead of helping people, you want to be in a place where you're empowering them. And you want to be in a place where you can lead the people who are leadable. And as you start to attract your reality, this situation then you'll move out of this place where people disappoint you. If you're codependent, you're going to set yourself up to have a lot of society disappoint you because this will always happen to you. And as you learn to be a lot more flexible, as you're a lot more relaxed, as you're able to navigate and you're able to move in ease rather than being rigid, and if you're rigid like this, you're going to, you're going to be overwhelmed real quickly. Hello? nice to meet you and that kind of energy affects your emotional state which affects your energy as you're able to move into higher states of consciousness that's love joy bliss reciprocity prosperity you become more flexible in your emotional state your energy you're not setting yourself up to be disappointed be in conflict be wrong you're in a lot more relaxed body where you're collaborating connecting you're empowering people you're looking for solutions you're, you're not you're not forcing people. You're not looking for that counterforce, that adversarial relationship to fulfill your feelings of abandonment, rejection, and resentment. And as you begin to move out of that state, it's a higher level of consciousness, higher level of awareness. So you want to be able to also let go of validating, justifying, explaining yourself. One of the most frequently used words in addiction is these two words. I'm going to spell it out for you as we're wrapping up the Facebook Live today. These are words of addiction. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. A large percent of society, they will ask you a question, and while you're giving them an answer, they will interrupt you in mid-sentence and say, yeah, but. You don't understand. My situation is unique. Yeah, but. You don't understand. I'm very critical. You don't understand. My situation is. This always happens to me. I do understand. Because when someone starts yeah, butting me, I know that they're not really looking for a solution. They're looking for conflict. And as you start to move out of a conflict consciousness and you move into a prosperity consciousness, you'll be able to identify these people and don't feel like it's your responsibility or your duty to fix them. When you're no longer the fixer, when you're no longer the fixer-upper, when you're no longer codependent, you're, you become a lot more independent and you're able to attract your reality and a much higher law of frequency, quality, like-minded, success, reciprocity, health-conscious, professionals who are seeking guidance, wisdom, opportunities, significance, who are seeking who, who are seeking influence and affluence. And you you virtually can become that voice. And there's so much room for this. And and that means that you begin to change your self-talk, your self-awareness. 
So what you're also looking for are people who are responsible. These are the type of people who have the ability to respond. And as you become skilled at interviewing in a relaxed body, asking questions in a sequence over and over. Now, I'm going to release a little, this is, a, this is an inner secret that's going to be happening here. On January 12th, I'm going to come out of the prospecting closet, and I'm going to host a two-hour live prospecting clinic on a Saturday. That is Saturday, January 12th, and my my GMS inner team is going to build a platform for that call. It's going to be a live prospecting clinic. Brad Carley is going to be producing some leads specifically for me for that call, and I'll be calling leads for generically scheduling appointments. I'm going to give some of the leads away to some of my clients because I don't build a network marketing business. So I'm going to be I'm going to be so I'm going to be calling some live leads. Also, if you buy that product, I'll give you the opportunity to send me two or three of your leads if you're someone who buys that product. And I'll go down a list and I'll call someone's leads for them for whatever company they're in. And I'll show you how that is done from an independent perspective of how to be a professional and a professional salesperson, a professional entrepreneur, not an amateur, not an amateur business owner. That'll be Saturday. January 12th. I'm only going to sell the tickets on the week of the 5th through the 12th. So there's going to be a large pre-sale. It's going to happen in a very short week, and I'll be letting you know promotions for that as it's coming up. I haven't done a live prospecting clinic in three years, so be aware of that. Today's call is really dedicated to those of you who are in recovery. You're separating your feelings from events. You're moving, you're moving into a higher level of awareness. Awareness means understand. I no, and in that no state, you attract your reality more frequently, quality, like-minded, mastermind people that you can create cultures with. And that's what you're seeking. As you are moving into the end of the era, 2018, just realize this. You could attract that one person right now. One of my biggest breakthroughs happened on December 26th, 1995, 1996. I answered a USA Today ad at an AM PM Mini Mart on the corner of Beverly Glen and Olympic in West Los Angeles, about one mile from Beverly Hills in Century City. I went on a Friday with a brick cell phone, those big cell phones and a beeper on my belt, went in and purchased a USA Today. And my friend T.C. Bradley, who was the person who assisted me to take my book, The Breakthrough Factor, to bestseller last week on Monday and Tuesday, he placed that ad in the USA Today. I answered it. I came into that business and created multiple six figures in a 12-month period, and I was $100,000 in credit card debt. That happened on December 26th, 1996. I share with you that story so you understand on any given day. David can beat Goliath on any given day. You can attract that one person who creates a difference with you and them in your life. Jeffrey Combs, dedicated to your recovery, dedicated to your sobriety, dedicated to your consciousness. This call is official. This video is officially a no. This live is officially alive. We'll be on video. You can also download the podcast tomorrow morning at goldenmastermind.com. Merry Christmas, everyone. Now, I will not be doing this event on Christmas Day or New Year's Day. I'll be taking two weeks off, and I'll re I'll reinvent this call. The first of the year. So this is my last video of 2018. You have a great day.